So just like you, I would love to add some yardage to my game. And I've recruited James <laughs> Tate, who hit 452 yards in the long drive and finished, was it third? Yeah, finished third out of 128, yeah. Third in the World Long Drive Championship. He's gonna give me a few really, really simple tips. He's kinda of shown me them off camera. I know they're gonna help you because they are unbelievably easy to apply for any age or ability, would you say? I, I, absolutely, I think, you know, it's, it, it's really easy to add a bit of speed and distance. It's just knowing how to do that. And it's just, you know, there's a few simple things which we're gonna go through today and you're gonna see it yourself. So yeah, it'll be fun. We'll awesome, fun. so before we get into the video, look, if you're new to the channel, it's one of your first lessons of mine, please consider subscribing. I release videos just like this every single week to try and help you improve your game. Plus, you'll never have to remember a thing. I'll always put a free download practice guide in the description box. Good luck. What do I need to do? Nice little height there. <laughs> <laughs> what do I need to do to gain a few extra yards? Um, it's a number of things. I mean, we've we've talked at length, um, you know, over dinner last night, and you're someone who is, you know, very straight off the tee, just kind of basically rotates around that kind of center axis, yes. right? So if you're looking for a bit of speed, we talked about trigger moves. Now, yes. I think trigger moves is a great one. We're, we've all stood in a par five, where it's, it's like straight down. It's like, I want to get one down there to give myself best chance of getting as close to the green as possible. So how do we do that? Well, if you take your setup, for example, yep. if you're standing on a par five right now, yep. literally the whole world to aim at, yep. what, are you, what are you thinking? What's in your head? When I'm thinking, I'm, I, I, lead, I picture the shot. I picture okay. the flight of the shot. I picture where I'm going to land it in the fairway. And then my trigger generally is, is in a sense, it's kind of, I, I take a look, I go back, and then I go. Okay, so what I, what I would say is, if we swap positions yep. and, and pass, pass club. Swap the band. So what I'm trying to do here is just making sure I'm not feeling too tight, a little bit free. A lot of people will have maybe a few kind of waggles. For me, yeah. I kind of almost want to be staying behind it as much as possible, but I just get a little, a little kind of this way first. Okay. So just get my body weight a little bit more this so way. So some people are going to look at that and say, but, but Danny, I've, I've been taught to uh, not to sway off the golf ball. So it's not swaying. Okay. So that's the thing. So a lot of people will look at it and be like, oh, you're swaying. It's yeah. like, I'm not swaying. I'm just, I'm moving my weight onto my, onto my right side. So if you think about how your feet move, yep. I'm actually trying to pull my hips this way a little bit, okay. like a corkscrew, yep. for example. So all I'm doing, if I put the club here, I'm just thinking about kind of wind, winding in. Yep. Yes, I, I reverse pivot, I take my left foot off. Yep. But that's because I'm trying to then right side load to left side load and then really basically screw my th feet in the ground and use, use the ground to my advantage. Okay. But what that allows me to do is if I move just a little bit like this, I know that I'm going to feel really free and swing f freely through the ball. Okay. So, you, so, so you're saying that the first start of this movement is you allowing yourself to move, is it kind of unlocking that sense of freedom exactly. in the motion versus somebody who's maybe static here and then swinging? Yeah, exactly. So if I'm going to come in here now and, mm -hmm. and test that kind of first move out, let's grab a tee. I'm starting out there. Let's say I've been a little bit static yeah. as a golfer. How do I initiate? What do I start to feel? What am I supposed to be doing here to kind of really kind of get this going? I would probably just make sure you're feeling that you know, you've got a few kind of like wagg waggles with the club. Your feet are kind of moving up and down. You, you feel like you've got control of the, the club face yep. as well. Okay, and when you say, when you say control of the club face, how do you mean? So when, you, when you're kind of doing these kind of pre-shot waggles, yep. you're gonna feel the club face being square. So you're not letting it kind of go limp? So no, no. Not, not, not too loose. So yep. you wanna make sure you feel like you've got control of that club face. Get it. And then it's all, all about really just making sure that you're giving yourself that kind of space, that freedom to give yourself the time to get the club to the top of the swing and then literally just send it and just feel your arms nice and free through the ball. So do, what I kind of feel when I'm doing this is, would it, would it be right to almost sense like if I was having like, imagine I've got a big sandbag. Yeah. It's almost like if I'm gonna throw the sandbag this way, I feel yeah. like I'm using my legs. I'd normally, you pick it out and you'd use your legs to is that what you mean? Yeah, kind of like I, I, adding that kind of absolutely. like absolutely. So a, a great, a great tip. Like if you're quite a big avid gym goer, pick up a medicine ball and just do some throws against the wall. It's yeah. the same thing. You you think you're you're trying to throw this ball through the wall? You're essentially trying to do the same thing with a driver. Yeah. But you have to move this way yeah. to go that way. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to get that weight to 
So throw the ball basically for it. getting literally getting some momentum into this right side. Yeah. Okay. And I, it's funny if I feel momentum in the club. Yeah. You you, know? you, you, you'll notice it straight away because you'll feel like, all oh, right, my my right hip is yes. just going this yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, do you know what? It actually feels more stable. It's weird, isn't it? Yes. So even though you kind of almost uh, you move it, feel there's a sense that you you've got more free um, for more freedom. Yeah. It actually feels more stable. It feels like I'm really this right side actually yeah. actually sticking to the ground more and you give me something that I can push off. From. Your right foot is basically gripping the ground yes, I feel like. like like that, and you'll feel it straight away. Hit, hit one and see see what you think. Yeah. Have a couple practice swings first and just kind of get a real feel for it. But you see how you're you're already right like getting that load on that yeah, side. Yeah, I can really feel that. Yeah. See what you think. It's a little bit bottomy. The one, the one thing I would say as well, I, I would, I would try and just get your hands not so far forward. Okay. Try and just, yeah, perfect like more that. Here? Yeah, yeah, just okay. a little bit more neutral. Okay. The bit here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, like that a lot. Yeah. Mhm. Mm A little bit cutting. That was a good strike. Not bad. I left it, just left the first up in a little bit. Yeah. But what I like about it, what 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 are you feeling? Do you feel quite free going? Yeah. I, do you know what? I think like the timing's clearly clearly out, mm -hmm. a little bit out. But what I like about it is. But that's the thing. If you so this is a massive thing. So if you're chasing speed, you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yes. Because you're going to spray it. Yes. Yeah. So all you're trying to do is, if you, for example, you, you're saying you're swinging kind of like 118s, right? 120s. Yeah, yeah. If you're trying to chase like 125, yeah. you're going to hit the ball left, right, all over the Initially, place. Initially, yeah. Initially. Yeah. But then when you get to being more consistent at 125, it's yeah. like, right, okay, how far can I go? Can I get to 130? And then your 125 all of a sudden becomes your stop. Yeah, and, I, and it's, just, it's just what I said to my students. One of the things that we focus on first is, look, we're going to get you solid contact. Once you've got your solid contact, we don't we ignore direction, we ignore distance. Then mm -hmm. we'll work focus on what we're doing here, which is distance. Mm -hmm. Now you kind of get a sense of what the distance is. Yeah. Then we'll get the accuracy afterwards. Yeah, yeah, you know? hundred percent. Yeah, I like Cause, that. Because we'll do hit a couple more of the, get used to it, and then we're going to throw a little, a little, throw that a little cool a, drill in, a little drill in, which will help you kind of understand the the loading and unloading of the of the body so and using the drill. Here. Yeah. So I would. Yeah, okay. I, I like that. I would, I would almost. This is gonna feel weird. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. So you're really hitting on the back of the ball. Okay. That's gonna take the spin off, and you're gonna be able to launch it higher as so well. So I've just gone from there. I've just gone a little bit more this yeah. way. Yeah. 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 Feels like I'm gonna hit more up on it. Yeah. Absolutely. Bomb. Look at that tight draw. Yeah. That's lovely. Good. Good start. And you've you've almost gone through the range. <laughs> Which just, is 325 yards, by yeah, the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that, that felt really, really solid. And, and it feels, do you know what it feels as well? It feels like it's putting a smile on my face. Yeah, exactly. it feels, it feels, it feels nothing, natural. There's nothing better than standing up on a par five or a par four, which is straight down. And you're just no. like, right, I just want to send one down there. But we're, but we're going we're gonna to throw in a, another element. So we've kind of talked about that kind of trigger move, that, that loading. Now yep. we're going to talk about unloading. And I'm going to throw something in here. Okay, go on then. So for me, I, I use this to warm up now. Is this, do you, uh, so you, were you using this, this is, when you hit your 452 yard drive? Yeah, so <laughs> I warm up using a few different things. Now for me, I'm kind of, this allows me to get that feeling of that right side kind of winding up, shall yeah, we say, yeah. to then unwind through it. But it allows me to understand what my body's doing kind of at that moment of impact and, you know, through, through the hitting and striking zone, right? Okay. So, I'm getting my hands up here, so I'm... And when I'm you say getting your hands up, just for the hands people... nice and high. Nice and high, okay, yep. Because if you get your hands nice and high, then you can, you can really pull down hard into your left side to then use the ground what? to push. So, so it's just, it's, you're using the ground effectively. What do the hands, uh, just for people watching, yeah. getting the hands high, what's the, what's the difference between keeping them low, which I see a lot of amateur golfers, they're kind of stuck, yeah. they're stuck around here. What's that doing to the, them? So if, if you're keeping them low, it doesn't allow you to be aggressive. It allows you to rotate through it. Yeah, because you're only going to come from you're here. You're not going to get speed being low. Yeah. Speed comes from here. You look at any of the guys who hit an absolute country mile, yeah. especially 
you know, guy Minwoo Lee again. I'm going to throw him in there. Yep. His hands are high, yes, like seriously high, yep. and his ball speeds are crazy. But if you watch his his uh, action in slow mo, you see his hands really come in like that, yes, because he's been so aggressive at the ball. Yes, this essentially allows you to do the same thing. Okay. It gets you to feel what your kind of lower half needs to be doing as well. So for me, when I get my hands up high here, I can really push the ground, like on my left foot. And I can see that, yeah. And be really yeah, yeah. aggressive. So everything kind of, you're just working on sequencing. So you Love really that. just kind of pull, pull down and. And as I'm ground. watching that, so what I'm almost seeing with the, with the towel here is that there's a real extension of your body as that towel is like fully. Yeah. You know, it's almost lining up almost. Your, your, your left hip essentially is here. And then you watch McElroy, yeah. Justin Thomas. Their foot's almost coming off the ground because yeah. they're using it so so aggressively, but they're just maximizing everything they have. Got it. Same thing, but it's allowing you to pause and feel and, that, that And this motion. helps you feel it? For me, yeah. It's a great warm-up tool. Anyone can do it. Let's have a go. It's literally a towel just wrapped, and I put some tape on it. Nothing fancy. How simple is that? I know. So how do I start with this? So just... So I, I would start with, we've talked about kind of like, Screwing that right foot in, yep. getting so the hand, gonna, hands high. Yeah, so I'm gonna, from here, I'm just gonna, from there, I'm just yeah. gonna load so, it and up. And then pause, and then you're just gonna swing hard. So, what I would do is, I always make sure that this is gonna be here. Okay, so that would so you see how, low, high, hands ha how yeah, high your hands have yeah, to yeah, go. Yeah, that's really good. So, from here, up there. Yep. And then just be really aggressive through impact and turn. Yeah. So, you'll feel the resistance of the towel trying to get your body to move. Yeah, I really feel that. So it's almost like it's forcing you to really accelerate yeah. because otherwise it's just going to be... It's dropping. adding resistance. So it's getting, getting your body to move efficiently because if your timing's out with it or if you, if you try and go too quick from the top and you yeah. don't let it set, yes. then your lower half doesn't have the time to kind of Love that. move the way you want it to. So up here gets yep. it there. Yeah. And if you want it to go... Nice. And if you wanted to go one further, go to the top. Yep. All right. I give you, I give you permission to bring this left heel off the ground. Oh, look at that turn, beautiful. Okay. And then smash that left heel into the ground. You all see that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it feels good. And for, the, for the, so somebody who's maybe a senior golfer, mm -hmm. you know, just these tiny, clearly we're not, they're not gonna have all this mobility, but no. letting that go, understanding that if they get their hands just a little bit higher than if they're only here, just getting them up a little bit higher is going yeah. to really help to give them that rotation and that ability to just so fly down. The thing as well, it's like you, you can break your left arm if you, if you want to just to get up yeah. here because then you can really just kind of sink down into it. If your backswing is like sure anyway, yeah. if you want, to, you want to just make sure you get it there, well, this you're is, going to reconnect when you, that left, yeah. left arm straightens anyway. Well, this is one of the biggest myths I see in, in golf. And if you're watching this and you've ever been trying to keep your left arm straight, one of the things I've, I've seen with so many players is they've been told to keep this left arm straight. But the reality is, is uh, you see, the, like, look at Brooks Koepka and J what is it? Uh, Jordan Spieth and a lot of the guys, they've almost got flex yeah. coming through impact here. Yeah. Because this is, you know, this is powerful yeah, versus absolutely. like rod straight. Yeah, absolutely. get that. So I think what I want you to do now is Tying the two things together. Yep. Swing that as hard as you can. Yep. And then let's try and transfer everything into driver. Okay. Okay. Yep. So you'd would you have a pause when you do this at the top just to feel Abs it? Ab absolutely. You want to make sure you're feeling everything from the the takeaway in the loading phase to unloading. That's that, that just just getting just letting that go a little bit there felt. Like that felt well, easier. What you're doing is you create, you're allowing your body to naturally turn. Yes. Like if you look at some of the greats, like if we go way back, like you look at like Nicholas and like, you know, that generation, Gary Player, like a lot of them were bringing this left foot this yes. slightly off the ground. Just got taught out. I, well, and it's stupid. Well, do you know what? Because I didn't, I didn't think about lifting that then. Mm -hmm. It was this really helped because in a, in a basically I needed to lift that in order to get my hands high mm -hmm. and as you said yeah. get the, the thing of that's the only way I could do that was to let that go. Now it feels like so much easier to come. But if you if when you when you look back back on this on camera, you're yeah. gonna see like the amount of turn yeah. and how high your hands are is night and day. 
But like, I'm, it's really impressive. I'm keen. I'm keen. Yeah, let's just smash, sand, a, sand a, let's just sash, a smash a few. Yeah, come on. Let, let's see it. And this is, the, this is the next stage. Once you kind of get these kind of sequ sequencing bits in, you then put it into, into motion. And yeah, like we said, you know, when you're chasing speed, you're going to hit a couple yep. left, you're going to hit a couple right. But exactly. you're on the driving range. That's, that's why you're there. You're there to practice and you're there to kind of like see, see what you can do, especially yep. with a driver. So I, here, I, this is, I'm not worried about direction at this stage. I'm trying to feel what's going to give me those extra yards. And then later down the line, we'll then start to kind of hone it yeah, in. Exactly. And... So if, if, you, if you have a couple practice swings, exactly what we're, what we're doing. Oh, yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. And then just like. You're gonna you're gonna time it, and you're gonna feel like you're being so much more aggressive, especially at impact. And the one swing thought I want you to do when you hit the when you're looking at the ball is like I want to hit the ball hard. So I'm doing I'm doing I'm doing it. I'm yeah. So hit the ball hard. There's the difference between swinging fast and actually hitting the ball hard. <laughs> Look at that. Feels free. Feels free. You've just flown it through the <laughs> driving range. Really? Yeah, yeah. You've flown that bunker at the back. Jesus. How long's the range? 325. Bloody hell. See, that's so much more aggressive though. Yeah. But if you can take that on the course, you're like, right, cool. Like you're going to give yourself an easier opportunity to get to that par five and two, which gives you that two putt for birdie. Exactly. But also, do you know what though? It doesn't feel out of control. It feels, the body just feels naturally tighter, funny mm -hmm. enough, in the sense that it feels actually more under control. I feel like sometimes when I, I'm being too careful, I actually feel limp and loose and... You just want to feel as, as free as possible with the big stick in hand, because if Love you start it. getting tight and uncomfortable, that's when you start having your issues. But if you're going to swing freely, you're going to at least make decent contact with the ball. It might go left, it might go a little bit right. Yeah. But if you feel more confident and free over that ball, and that's you're, exactly you're, going to, you're going to enjoy just sending it down there. I just want to smash it. Let's do it yeah, one more, on. one more. Finish come off on. with one more. Up. There you go. Nice swing. Not quite that time. It's a little, little low, but it's still gone though, hasn't it? It's still gone. That's almost at the back, back of the range. And, and it's still straight as well. That came out of the neck. And look how far yeah, it's gone. Exactly. Hit one, hit one more. Let's finish on a high. So this time I'm going to tee it up a little bit higher. Yep. Because it, it means it's easier to kind of stay, stay kind of a little bit behind it and launch it. Okay. Come on. Send it. Let's see it. Send it. Come on. <laughs> Let's see that. Where's that gone? <laughs> It's literally just kind of a slight fade through the range. Awesome. So you see, see where the see where that white the white stick is to yep. the left of the bunker. You've gone straight over the top of that, and it's just bouncing the rough over the back. James, that was really really good fun. I, I enjoyed that yeah, so it's, much. It's, it's fun. I mean, that's what you want to make your range ses range sessions like, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. You just want to have fun. You want to hit bombs. Like you want to take it onto the course. You want to hit, you know, drivers long. You want to out drive your friends, regardless of what what handicap or what level you are. It's like, you could have the worst round in the world and then you can be like, yeah, but I drove you on that hole. Exactly, you know I, mean? I love that, I love that. So, huge, huge thanks. James Tate, go and check him out on his socials. Absolutely awesome. Maybe next year we'll be here and I'll be competing with you for a few extra, what's it, 452 yards? 452 yards. I've still I got might, 100 yards to go. I might, have a, I might have a world championship belt by you then. Might have, you might have, you might have. Fingers but crossed. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you give, uh, give it a like if you did, consider subscribing. And until next week, have a wonderful golfing week.